Uh, hi everyone and welcome back. So here we are going to talk about Node.js with Nex, which is a library. So you can call it like uh, we are going to talk about Express or you can write a Nest.js app and with that we are going to use Nex library for database. I mean we are not going to write a uh, SQL queries. We are going to use Nex to make our queries and give us the data back. So what we can do is we can create a simple directory. Uh, we can call it as a next node.js. Okay, this is just a basic setup. And then we need to install the, the required packages. So what all different dependencies we need to get started. So first of all, we can just create a simple package.json using npm init. It will give us an opportunity to create a simple package.json and then you can do npm install minus minus save next okay and then you can also install next in it because we want to populate the next cli i mean this is like uh, installing the next module globally so we can do next in it right it will create a next file for us if you just like to take a look onto this this is a simple next file it has it has created and this is like a configuration file like sqlize rc type orm config type orm dot js dot ts similarly this is another file which is next file dot js which contains the, uh, the environment configurations like okay for dev this is the sqlite for development we are using and the connections are details are here for staging the client is postgres sql and the connection details are here we are going to use our dev environment and we are going to use our configurations something like this so we can actually update this next file and then there are many ways to define this thing uh, we can actually delete all these things or instead of module.exports we can just replace with our definition which is we are going to use one single environment here okay and we can just add things after this and just add a parenthesis okay what it is saying that we have migration directory we have seeds database seeds and this is the whole information about database this can be your mysql this can be your postgres or any other database client is a postgres so we are targeting here only particularly about the postgres database and this is the connection here you can also specify the connection url if you don't want it to provide all these information in different variables then we can provide that in the connection url all these things okay so let's get started i am showing you the code which i already pushed on to the github this contains all about okay without orm when you are using orm like next mongodb sqlize type orm and uh, so currently we are talking about the next right so we are inside a next starter and we already installed a package.json should be here and we we just can execute next in it which will give us a simple next file i think so it has created a next file.js and we are going to overwrite this with our definition so it is saying okay on the development we are using sqlite no we are not going to use all those things different database and different environment our configuration will be a little bit simpler than this one so we'll just copy and paste that our configuration is this is the connection url we can use a simple database url search path is for now not needed migration folder it means like we can have one data directory inside this we can have a migrations and seeders inside it i mean either you have a different environment like for development i'm going to use a postgres and these are the migrations and seeders path or for testing this is the database url currently it is pointing to the same db url otherwise you can have a dev db url which you can say okay this is only going to be used for dev database or at the runtime you populate the different db url in the process.env and that we are going to do with dot env module that is a standard module we use npm install 
So let's install all the required module for our simple application with express and we have install minus minus save. We need a postgres client. We need a dot env and we need express and we already have an x. So all these modules we are installing and after that we can just add some start scripts and all inside our package.json. Let's say start and we are going to write an index.js here. Node index.js. We are going to write migrations and all. So for that we have to introduce the another scripts which is migrate or undo migrate. So for migrate we are going to use this script which is provided by migrate latest okay and uh, this command is fine for now npm run we can just do npm run migrate and this will do the thing okay wait a second i think i need to and then copy it again because the script has updated the package.json now we can do this npm run we can remove the script here we are okay now we can write start writing our code inside index.js file which is going to be simple express server we are going to write you can call it as a to-do app or something but if you are a beginner if you are learning node.js and want to understand the database integration then first you should try with without ORM and once you understood all these things what you can do you can start using ORM concepts okay let's say the next next is not a big ORM it's just a simple query builder that helps you to write a simple join without getting into the SQL queries okay so what we will do is we are going to first of all uh, create a database right we are using docker for that if you don't have a docker you can install a postgres server on your system and then you can install some postgres client to connect to your postgres database but postgres server is the main prerequisites okay so now we have this docker compose.yml which is already there it's better if i move this thing out so other projects can also use it move this out and then i do have docker compose and docker compose override now either you use mongodb or whatever you can see these are my docker files and it contains three containers right postgres mongo and mysql and inside override we are doing couple of things okay mysql postgres volumes these are the container definition and their volume mounting so what i need i need only postgres so you can do it in the different ways okay let's say i'm not using mysql or i'm not using mongodb you can comment that out just like this or you can just remove this out i'm not going to okay let me first push this code then i can add this in the git ignore okay i think i did one mistake here starter i need to add a git ignore file and then i can put node modules because i see it is showing 2000 files which is really wrong and then i can reload okay i see only 12 changes git status and i can go to the root folder and then again git status okay i moved i deleted these and i moved so git add git commit or so what i did is git cz and what changes i have done moved docker files and added next app with express get post origin master so i have actually posted a code what is the problem 
yes and now i can override something i i post it only for you guys so now i can i just need a postgres container so what you can do is i can create a copy of these two files this is also another way to maintain the copies override.example so it will contain the the main content and here i can also put docker compose dot example so i don't need to delete anything i can create a backup yml files from the docker compose i can remove uh, mysql data mongo data api data let's say this one and i can remove mysql container and then i just need only postgres container i can remove the the mongodb container from the docker compose override we already have a backup of both these files in the example i can remove this one and then what i need i need to have a docker running so my docker is running i can do is docker compose up so it should be able to give me a postgres container up and running and this is going to the details about it so username password everything is test and it is using this entry point db if you go to docker utils this particular script is also helping us to bootstrap the uh, postgres and we are already putting this file inside a container if you look at the override file we are mounting this file as a init script so whenever the container is up and running it will execute this init db dot d i mean whatever is put inside this docker utils is considered as a init script so it will actually execute this sh file and it will create a data phase for us so i can do docker compose up it will just check okay do i have this postgres container there postgres image already downloaded yes it will just create the container and then it will check do i need to create any database if yes it will create that and then we will get the url either you are using the the docker containers or you are installing the postgres server on your system you can do it either way so you can see server started it has created database it has created test database and role test already exist is it terminated this so you can actually use this node db okay this is running we can check the logs okay now what is the next thing we are going to do we are going to connect to the database right and to connect to the database we are inside this folder next starter and next file right and the next file we just need all these environment variables otherwise we would not be able to populate these things because we are we are already using dot env file so let's create a dot env file inside this remove everything close everything and inside next starter create a dot env file we are using uh, dot env module and here we can use couple of things here we need db url first of all let's see the db url and how the db url looks like that we can populate here so db url starts with uh, this is the db url and we have to populate that in the env file and inside next file we can use a dot env config so that we can load the values of process dot env environment so dot env module we already have installed with express dot env pz is a postgres client library and inside dot env we can just populate all our environment variable like what is the node env what is the url of database all these information we can put in a dot env so let's put that as a database url so here we have db url which is and db url starts with the postgres and you can see what we are passing the username which is test password is i think test and then couple of other arguments like which is what is your host if you are not running this node inside a container you can put localhost 5432 
and your database name which is test okay so we have populated all these things inside the db url also you can also put node env which is i'm talking about local or development for now and then we can start talking about a couple of things here if you go to next file it already contains these configurations for the development because the environment is development client is the postgres connection url migrations and seeders okay uh, now we need to check if we are able to connect to the database for that we need to start writing the actual code right so we have to create index.js file have to populate some configurations and you have to create express app so const express we can copy this from the existing app we are not using any typescript stuff for now express and we can also create one db one database configuration so inside data we can have a db.js file okay let's create a new file and inside new file it will be db.js here we are going to initialize our database configuration for the project we have written only the database configuration but how can we initialize the connection so that our apis can talk to the database so for that we have to require next which we can do using require next which we have already installed and then we have to get the next file which we already have in the root of the project so we have to go one step back and next file and then again another thing is const environment equal to what is environment process.env dot node env if you are passing environment otherwise i will be assigning the default environment as a development okay and then i can get the config options options you will be getting from the this environment of next file because next file is something which we have imported and i will pass the environment because this next file is just nothing but a javascript object and you can pass the environment which is either development production or something and then you can export all the configuration in the next orm object so this actually this line represents our database object so now we need to import this thing everywhere and then we can do all the database operations on to this so whatever we are exporting we are exporting the next object and we are passing the configurations configurations means what is the database url what is the client which is a postgres all these things okay looks like everything is good we can import this thing inside our index.js so what we will do is uh, go to index.js file and then this is the database database instance we can see require and we are inside data and there is a db.js file and then we can create the instance of express const app equal to express and then app.use all the middleware stuff cookie parser body parser and all these things express dot json now we can just this is the body parser which will help us to extract the the data from the request body and then you can do is app.get okay i have some url like forward slash and this is request response for now you can use existing express generator app to do all these things and i'm doing response.json message this is my default route hello world and now we can write our apis our apis which will actually fetch the data see the data inside a database and once you define all the routes we can listen to this app instance which is app dot listen and we need to define a port 
so uh, we can just directly pass process dot env dot port if it is there otherwise initialize the port with 8000 and then there is a callback function if everything is well then we can see console.log application started and you can just log the, the port also on which port the application has started that's it okay so this is a simple express app we, are, we have created now what we are going to do is we are going to write a db interface right this is a database object so once the request comes let's say simple to do app create insert update delete we already have a database instance now we can actually do insert find and all these operations so here we have basic app ready we can just simply say node index.js it should be able to start our application on port 3003 and we can test this how it is working you can see send and it is responding so that means our server is up and running and we can start our application now next thing we are going to do here is add to add some logic it's not like we are going to just return hello world we can start with simple to do app to do app means uh, an app server simply can return the list of to do's and can give us a feature to add a new to do let's say get to do and here I can get all the to do's from a table so I can use async await and all these things async await and I can say we already have a DB instance and I'm going to get the details from the to do table and we are also going to create this table and I'm just responding with this to do's object and another thing is the post let's say when we have this is the get and this is just a simple hello world app we are talking right now we will create a proper structure of this code in the later examples so app.post to do's and here we are going to get the, the task from the request body so let's say I have a task which I'm sending inside a request dot body so I will get the task object and then I can simply say is const new to do new to do equal to and I can just do is await is the database object the table name which is to do and here I can just do dot insert insert and I am going to insert task and then if all all is well then we should be able to get the data if it is the items then we can just return the item dot row count or you can also simply do is await db dot insert because this is a promise you are just already doing await and just wrap it inside a try catch if this fails it will go inside an error and then if new to do equal equal to one because we are returning the row count so this row count should be equal equal to one that shows okay it has been inserted successfully then return response dot status we can say 201 which is created and then json object and json is message created that's it so this is a simple route but before that we also need to understand uh, how we are going to create this table i mean we need to have some kind of a migration mechanism right so we already have this migration folder what we are going to do is we are going to create a uh, run some simple commands and that simple command is npm run uh, that should be because we are going to create a migration so there should be uh, there should be a command to create a migration and run the migration so let me just see if I just create uh, is there any command like create or make next migration make npm run make 
I need to pass the name also. Missing name, so I can pass the name is test. Okay, yes, it has created test migration, you can see. And I can change the name of test to something else. Let's say it is to do's. Okay, and then if you look into the migration code, this is the default code we can see. This is up and down, right? Now we need to write the what we are going to do with this, right? So this is a function, you can convert it into arrow function. We already got the next object. So I will just quickly copy and paste this. So I'm doing a create table to do. This is a table uh, which has an increment. Primary key and text is to do dot text. So this is the text default value is, so this is a text value. Okay. And this is not nullable and it is like dropping the table if it doesn't exist. So there is up and down, same as the SQLized script. So it, this is optional dot not nullable. The so text task is of type test text. I mean, it's like a var char, you can say in our language. Now I can just do is we can also trigger simple migrate migration command. So migration command should be able to insert some records. Migration will run the, the migration. So we can also create one seed. Uh, let me just try to seed make if there is a command. Something like this. So it is seed make npm run. I'm just giving it a try. I'm not sure if there is a command like this npm run seed make test and there is right so we can just rename it to to do's and then if you just say seed means if you want to populate some data right we already know the table name table name is to do okay it is actually deleting first of all the record before inserting that delete existing and then insert insert what we are going to insert some IDs and the task task is a worker. So ID is one, two, three, which is increment auto increment order. And then we are inserting this. So now we can just run a migration first, which is NPM run migrate. What it will do, we already have a database connection and this is our next file one thing we need is the process environment variable here because we don't know what is the value of process.env so we need to use a config module this .env module this .env module should be able to populate the config and same you can pop put inside a index.js also that will populate your db url from .env so this is .env we have db url so npm run, what is the command? npm run migrate. And we have a target database. 5432. Let's go to Docker Compose file. <coughs> <coughs> so you can see here, we are not connecting. So this is the host port, this is a container port. In the container, the Postgres is running on 5432 but on the host because we are accessing it from the host machine, not from container to container. That's why we have to use port 5434. Change your .env file, 5434, test database, npm run migrate. And it is using the development environment default. It did run the, the migration and our migration is done. Now we can actually execute the node index.js again and we have 3003 port running. Now we go to our index.js here on the get command. We are reading the record from the to do a table. Uh, let's say our table name is I think to do only. And then let's see if it is working. So cannot get uh, did we okay. We change the route to to do I think. This is HTTP get and you can see 
it is able to successfully query the database okay now we can convert this into uh, post also this is hello post this is converted to the post and here we have content type is application json here we are doing task so now we can do the post and here we did a small i did a small correction because uh, our table contains the task as a column right and this body contains the object which contains the the task as a value so this is our body so this body we can directly pass inside insert okay and then we can just say response.json if, if it is created successfully okay or you can also return a particular id once it is inserted those queries we will take a look and here now we can see the cooking coding whatever the task you have and you can do http get and you can return all these things okay so simple hello world which is okay get and post so this is how we access the database object this is the table name now after this you can do insert you can do update you can do remove all these operations can be performed on top of that okay so this is all about the hello world with the node.js and the next now we are going to take a look onto the advanced concept where we are going to have proper structure but this example talks about how we can write a migration how we can create a new migration like you can create a number of tables user product item shopping cart uh, all these different tables and then you can actually write a seeders for them and then you can just get the access so because this is the db object and how we are accessing a table by just doing a simply db and the table name okay this this library is a lightweight there are some advantages and there are some disadvantages we will we are looking at currently the express app which is not using typescript and all so we are not defining any typings and all for this project okay thanks everyone